Hello, everybody. It's Mike here at Game for Scratch. And today we are talking about Rider for Unreal Engine. It's currently in public preview. It is an in-development IDE specifically for Unreal Engine uh, from JetBrains, the makers of IntelliJ, the Kotlin programming language, WebStorm, PyCharm, you name it, they make a development tool for it. They're one of the best development tool companies out there. And as I mentioned, they are making an IDE specifically for Unreal Engine. Actually, what they're doing is modifying an IDE that is currently for .NET developers. All right, that might be a little confusing, right? So you're sitting there going, okay, well, isn't the primary programming language of uh, Unreal Engine Blueprint and C++? Well, yes, it is. And isn't the primary programming language of Project Rider or Rider C Sharp? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Well, what they're doing here is they're kind of refactoring the whole idea behind Rider, which is currently really heavily used for Unity development, and they're turning Rider into their game development IDE. And I love that idea. So then you don't have to keep buying different products. I don't have to buy C Lion, their C++ and C IDE, just because I want to use C development. If I'm a game developer, if I'm working between Unreal Engine or if I'm working in Unity, that's what Rider is all about. And I got to warn you right up front, it is currently in preview only, and it is currently Windows only, but that is temporary. They are a very cross-platform company. It will be ported to other languages. So here we are in an action RPG example from Unreal. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I just picked it because it is a combination of Blueprint and C++ code. And what you normally need to do to get started, at least for now with Project Rider or Rider for Unreal Engine, is um, you need to come in here and go file and then generate your C++ code. Now, I've already done it. So instead, what you're seeing here is refresh Visual Studio project, but you need to create a Visual Studio project. And this is something that's going to go away in time. We'll learn more about that later on. But right now, you open up, you create an SLN file. Then what you do is you head on over to Project Rider. Here is the initial launch screen you get when you first load it, and you load that guy up. So it knows how to read SLN files, typical uh, solution files from Visual Studio. Uh, and you can see here it is a... Um, it's a code IDE. It's it's pretty straightforward. The nice thing here is you do have uh, full theming support. We're in a darkish mode right now. I know um, themes are important to a lot of people, especially if you're going to spend your life working in here. Interestingly enough, their their settings are under file and not edit. That's one of the weird things that they do. I'll come in here to appearance, go to the appearance category or drill down, and you'll see here we have a number of different options. So I could come here and we could switch to their dark IDE. And over here, you see we're getting one of the things that uh, that. It's not really specific to Rider, but um, JetBrains IDs in general do stuff like this. They tell you, hey, you know what? Windows Defender sucks, and it's running, and it's screwing up your code. Hey, and I like that tip. And it does that kind of stuff. That's kind of things that make Rider and IntelliJ and those kind of tools just so nice to work with is those suggestions that it does for you. All right, so here we're in the one mode. If you want to switch over to a light theme, uh, this light theme is really light, by the way. So uh, blinding eye warning ahead. Here we go. Oh, all right. So I'll switch back to a dark mode. I'm not normally a dark mode guy, but in this case, yeah, we'll go with that. Here, we'll switch to Visual Studio's dark mode. Uh, the nice thing here, too, is if you're coming from a different uh, background, so if you use something like Visual Studio's key bindings, you can use them. They've got options. When you first load it up, it's going to ask you which set of key bindings you want to use. Um, all right. So here we are in the IDE itself. You can zoom in and out. Uh, pretty straightforward. Another nice thing, and this is great with... Uh, JetBrain products in general is they're all built on the same basic platform and they're all very modular. So if I want to add additional support here, I'm going to go once again back to the settings down to the plugins environment here and we're going to find a number of different plugins here. So if you want to do Rust development, you can do Rust development. If you want to do um, Vim, if your Vim is your thing of choice, there is a Vim option here. Uh, where did you go, Vim? Here we go, Idea Vim. So you can turn it into a Vim type editor using the Vim settings, minds, and so on. Uh, so there are all kinds of things. You got integration into various different programming languages, into different source management, and so on. Uh, that's pretty standard across all of their IDEs. The nice thing is, too, you learn one and you can use them all. So if you need a C IDE, you've got C Lion, or now you've got Project Writer. But when you go to Linux, eventually, same thing. If you want to switch over to Java, you've got IntelliJ, same set of keyboards, same basic support, same basic approach. So you're going to be immediately comfortable. So if I I need a new IDE since I've already learned IntelliJ for Java. I pick up WebStorm to do some JavaScript or TypeScript development. It's the exact same process. That's what you're going to find here with Rider as well. Of course, it's a full-blown IDE. Uh, so come here. I can do things like and we're getting code completion. The nice thing here is we're also getting documentation integration. And that extends even further when it comes to uh, integration in uh, working with Unreal Engine. A lot of times you're dealing with these macros. There's all kinds of macros. Here you can see an expansion of the macro, but you notice how it's got the category name, verbosity, et cetera, as um, options here. Well, here, let's use that guy again. So if I go UE log, we're also getting, uh, let me try and figure out how to do it. We get code completion for the various different options that are available. So 
Yeah, I'll show it to you when we get to the documentation. I'm, I'm mangling this particular example, but it actually is a well aware of how these attributes macros work from Unreal Engine, and it works accordingly. The other thing it's got integration into is over here, you can see um, it's going dot, dot, dot. It's like, oh, wait a minute here. This isn't following the Unreal Engine naming convention. So you've got that linting ability as well. So it's kind of aware of how Unreal code should be structured, and it gives you recommendations. You can turn that off, by the way, if you wish as well. But it's giving you recommendations to keep your code consistent with the Unreal way of doing things. Um, it, it, you can run your code directly from here. It will run off into Unreal Engine. Now, you don't do Blueprint development in Rider. I uh, don't know if that's going to be in the future, but it does have awareness of what Blueprints are all about. We'll get to that in just a few seconds. You're also going to see here, you've got integration into the log. So if you run the code over there, you'll get your results. The Unreal Engine log will be echoed on this side of things. So that is kind of the idea here. The nice thing about things like um, the, all of their tools, but especially ones for that are uh, refactor powered, is you've got a reshaper powered story. You've got all kinds of refactoring tools here for um, you know extracting out a method, renaming a field, changing parameters on something. You can do global refactoring. It's got excellent refactoring tools, and in fact, that reflector is available as a plugin for Visual Studio as well. It's very well known and very popular. Also, see so you get full solution support on this end. Eventually, that is going to be switched to just being U project, so you don't even need to generate the solution anymore. So we're going to get nice, tight integration between the two as it matures. Again, one last warning, it is currently uh, Windows only, at least at the point of this preview. So if you want to get in on the preview, you do have to apply. We'll look at that in just a second. And we're going to go all over all of the, the brag speech. But we're going to talk about here, they've got the five reasons why you should use Unreal, uh, sorry, Rider for your Unreal Engine games. Now, the first one is if you do Unity and Unreal Engine development, this one is an absolute no-brainer because it, it handles both out of the box fully. Okay, so let's get into their five reasons. The first one is it's a fast IDE with native C++ support. Now, you've been wondering, okay, what about C-Lion? It's like, yeah, well, yeah, that is a C, uh, yeah, same thing. But this means that you don't have to buy another tool just to do C++ development using Unreal Engine. On top of that, it has ReSharper built in, ReSharper C++, which offers native cutting edge support for modern C++. Users are helped daily by 250 plus code inspections, 50 plus context actions, uh, solution-wide refactoring, and code generation abilities. You can see some of the inline stuff happening right there. And is built on top of the IntelliJ platform IDE, so fast integration, integrated version control, plugin support, all the stuff we already looked at just a second ago. Um, plus, it is rock solid, and the nice thing is, again, they're very consistent. So you get used to one, they kind of carry over, which is very nice. And next up, it knows about Blueprint, so it doesn't have a Blueprint editor per se. You can't edit Blueprints inside of Project Rider, but what you can do is have this nice integration. So uh, it reads blueprints from your project and the Unreal Editor, along with plugins from both, uh, allows Rider to show the usage in blueprint files as well as the values of the overridden properties, as you see over here. Uh, when navigating to a blueprint, it will automatically open it up in Unreal Engine. So if you're working on C++ to integrate with a blueprint, you open up the blueprint, it will automatically open it up over there. But on the C++ side of things, when you're exposing things over to the blueprint, it is basically blueprint aware. So it's a C++ editor that knows what the heck a blueprint is. And I don't think Visual Studio can do that right now, at least not out of the box, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below. All right, so next up we have uh, reflection mechanisms. And this is where I was kind of getting to. You've got things like U-Class, all these macros you got to use all the time, these reflection macros. Uh, it provides code completion for reflection specific specifiers and shows up the documentation in the quick documentation pop-up. So you can see U-Class, they're doing an abstract as one of the parameters, and it shows you what abstract means as you're doing it. And there is a lot of macro usage when you're working with um, C++ in Unreal Engine. So that's definitely a nice little feature to have there. As mentioned earlier on, it takes care of the UE4 code styling. Now, the funny thing is the one I'm demonstrating to you here is a bit of a false positive because it's saying to not capitalize RPG. But anyways, um, it does basically has awareness of how uh, UE4 name conventions are done and lints them for you. And finally, we have profound code analysis and RPC, RPC support. So uh, remote procedure calls, RPCs. Uh, Rider ensures that your UE4 code is accurate with the help of specialized UE4 inspections for missing or incorrectly set UE4 reflection macros. Similarly, code navigation and generation actions are set up to deal with UE4 remote procedure calls correctly. Um, so again, it just basically, it knows how to speak 
uh, Unreal Engine. And that, if you're working in C++ and Unreal Engine, could be pretty valuable. So now we're going to get into a couple of the FAQs. First one is, if you own Writer already, do you get Unreal Engine? Yes, you do, um, which is definitely nice. Here's the other key thing. We see as our main offering for game developers. So that is how Writer is being structured going forward. It's They're going to be their game development IDE. So it's not going to be language specific, not like C-Lion is um, C++ specific or um, uh Rider previous used to be .NET specifically, and now Rider is going to be game development specific. And I like that development. It, it's it's a good path for them to take. Uh, can I debug my UE4 game in Rider? Uh, so yes, you can. It has LLDB compatibility, so it, it can basically uh, read the debugging code Visual Studio Compiler handles. Uh, also has a UE4 NatViz files with projects and handles UE4 types nicely. Uh, Rider is cross-platform IDE. Is only avail- will be available on all three platforms. Right now, it is Windows only, but they plan to extend it to Mac OS and Linux in the future, which they will do. Almost all of their tools are cross-platform, so it would be really out of character for them to not do that. And do I need a specific project model to start UE4? And as we covered already, it reads SLN files, but in the future, it is going to work directly with U projects natively. Uh, definitely a nice thing. If you're interested in it, go sign up. Uh, basically, just fill out a form. It's pretty minimal. It's, you know, what do you use it for? What's your email address? And what game engines do you work with? Um, please note, Visual C++ compiler, SDK, Visual Studio build tools have to be installed in advance. So uh, it's not a full C++ tool chain in that case. Uh, but you can, by the way, uh, SDK and build tools are all completely free downloads. So that's not a big gotcha other than some disk-based requirements. And a little bit about uh, JetBrains before we move on. They've been around for 20 years. They make developer tools. They're the biggest maker of development tools out there, I think. That's fairly safe to say right now. They make ReSharper, which is actually part of Rider, but on top of that, they make space, uh, early access at this point, a team environment, the Kotlin programming language, and then, of course, the IntelliJ IDEs. As I mentioned, if you find one you like, you can move between them and have a very consistent experience across all the various different languages. So you can see it filtered down here, various different languages that are supported. We got IntelliJ. IntelliJ supports so many languages. It's primarily for JVMs, but you can get, actually get TypeScript, Ruby, um, probably C++. There's, there's all kinds of language plugins for IntelliJ. This is kind of their marquee IDE. There is a community version available completely free, by the way. There's PyCharm for Python, WebStorm uh, for uh, JavaScript and TypeScript, PHP Storm for PHP. Uh, again, Rider, which was previously for .NET, but looks like it's going to be more for game development, which I would actually maybe consider renaming it. Uh, but anyways, uh, C Lion, which is for C and C++, basically using a CMake-based um, build environment or project environment there. Uh, Data Grip. Uh, for databases, RubyMine for Ruby, App Code. I believe that's mostly for Swift, but it might also do Objective-C, but it's designed for iOS and macOS development, which is nice because Xcode is a screaming pile of crap. Uh, we've got Goland, PyCharm again, and then uh, educational licenses for PyCharm and IntelliJ. So you see they make a full spectrum of tools. And then, of course, ReSharper is also available as a plugin for Visual Studio itself. So you can get some of their logic and scripting tool or their refactoring tools available for other IDEs out there. So that is it. That is Project. Project Rider uh, currently in uh, early access or yeah, early preview is what they're calling it. Unfortunately, Windows only. But what they've done is taken Rider, turned it into a game-based development environment, perfect for Unity and Unreal Engine. It is now going to be aware of both um, Unity specific things and Unreal Engine specific things. And the nice thing is you're not going to have to buy multiple language IDEs if you're a game developer. Again, I like the move they're going here. It's 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 pleasant. Uh, so that's it. That is uh, Rider for Unreal Engine. If you're interested in checking it out, I will toss a link in the linked article down below. And yeah, let me know what you think. Comments down below. Goodbye.